Hello and welcome to this week's press conference. Today we're going to focus on some very exciting and much needed ARP funding for projects and businesses here in Erie. There's three things we're going to talk about. First is to showcase two affordable housing projects that we have. Second is to announce the second batch of flagship ARP and restaurant and entertainment venue grants. And third, we'll end the day with a very special proclamation for June. So first, we're sharing information about two affordable city housing initiatives. As everyone has probably already seen, the city provided a low interest loan to Beacon Communities to support their renovation of the Richford Arms right down here on the corner of North Park Row and State Street. We had originally earmarked $2 million for the residential construction and developing revolving loan fund for five plus new units. However, COVID has worsened an already existing shortage of affordable housing. Many residents who were already vulnerable were disproportionately impacted by the pandemic, leaving more people housing insecure. Due to the high demand for developers and the enormous community need, we doubled the available funding to $4 million. So now, we're excited to announce funding for two more housing initiatives. We're providing the Community Preservation Partners and Rochester's Cornerstone Group with a $450,000 low interest loan for their renovation of Methodist Towers over at the corner of 7th and Sassafras Street. We have also earmarked $3 million in low interest loans for Hans Hammer Mill Village new construction project in addition to $300,000 in home funds. Now I'm very happy to introduce to you Chris Groner, our Economic Development Specialist in the City of Erie's Department of Economic and Community Development. He's also the Vice President of Capital Finance and Lending for Erie County's Redevelopment Authority. Chris. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning, everyone. So last year when we received word that the City of Erie was going to receive funding from the American Rescue Plan Act, we began to think about sustainability, about the long term. While it would be tempting to spend the money quickly and on one-time expenditures, it wouldn't necessarily be the best use of those funds. We wanted to deploy these funds in a way that will both help the community today, but will also be there for the community tomorrow. It was critical that we create tools that enable us to keep these funds long past the spending deadline of 2026. We don't want to give these funds back after all. So we created multiple programs, including uh, one of which was a new revolving loan fund. Now we already had a lot of programs geared towards business and industry, but there was one glaring gap in our economic and community development system. And that was the ability to support and incentivize residential development on a larger scale in the city of Erie. Often there is a, a, a need for this critical gap financing for both affordable and market rate housing developments. So more specifically, we launched the City of Erie Residential Development and Construction Revolving Loan Fund. And shortly we're going to hear about uh, the first two projects that are being uh, partially funded with this new program. But before we hear from our guest, I'd like to give an overview of the approval timeline. So the deadline to submit applications for this initial round was Friday, March 18th. Uh, in addition to completing an online application, candidates were asked to specifically indicate the amount of funding they were requesting, uh, to forward a complete proposal, along with a budget and a narrative for the use of the funds. They also had to demonstrate the community need and how it would help address diversity, equity, and inclusion and show how the project would help reduce disparities and serve those who have been historically disadvantaged and disproportionately impacted by COVID. Because after all, it's what these funds were intended for. They also had to provide evidence of community support, identify secured matching funds, and include a plan for long-term sustainability and maintenance of the units. So our first diversity, diversity, equity, and inclusion project review team met on Friday, April 1st to interview the applicants, review the scores and proposals, and make a decision. And ultimately, that team recommended these two projects today. These projects were also passed by City Council at their May 18th meeting. And, and we are very thankful um, 
for both investments in the city and the opportunity to assist with these projects. So that being said, I'm now at this point, I'm going to turn it over to our first guest, uh, Seth Gallus, who is Senior Vice President of Community Preservation Partners, to provide an overview of our first project, the Methodist Towers Renovation Project. Seth? Thank you, Chris. Methodist Towers um, is an extremely exciting um, community for us to be involved with. It has taken uh, the work of many to get this, um, this project started, and um, with the help of um, the loan here, it'll be complete by the end of this year with an approximately 8.9 million total renovation going to 184 units of uh, seniors. Uh, these seniors have um, needs um, that far exceed the average. Um, uh, they're extremely low income and the units that we're able to provide there at the community with uh, partially with the help of this uh, loan um, range from 20% AMI uh, to 60% AMI. And uh, along with this loan and the other sources through PHFA, PNC Bank is our investor and City uh, Bank, um, you know, we are able to increase the energy efficiency of the building by more than 20 percent, um, are providing a large number of construction jobs, uh, many of which are local, and um, are able to do so with no permanent displacement of the residents while really focusing on the enhancement of the services to them. Um, some, of the, uh, some of the things that the residents will receive as part of this renovation include uh, Wi-Fi, uh, free of charge uh, to them, health and wellness services, classes and advocacy, uh, financial literacy education, um, additional resident resources for city programs, and we're really going to be focusing on repurposing the community spaces to uh, provide uh, those amenities to the residents. Um, this all happened in a time of extreme challenge. Um, inflation has taken hold, interest rates have uh, skyrocketed, and um, the, the general financing structure is just difficult in order to preserve uh, these uh, much needed public resources. So we're extremely uh, excited to be a part of it. Um, the, the entire building um, from the units to the community spaces to the exterior uh, we'll see a wholesale um, renovation, and it's just very exciting, and we thank the City of Erie for the opportunity to work on it. So thank you so much. Thank you, Seth. I appreciate the overview of your project. It's very exciting what you're doing at Methodist Towers. It's a, uh, filling a critical need in our community, and uh, we appreciate the investment in, and uh, your, your uh, uh, commitment to Erie. So thank you. Uh, second project, uh, exciting project that we are going to discuss today um, is a new uh, proposed housing development on the city's east side. And for more detail on that, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Matthew Good, CEO of uh, HANS here in Erie to give us the details. Matthew, thank you. Great. Uh, thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Chris, uh, and Jen Hoffman for all your assistance in uh, moving the projects forward and deploying the ARP funds in our community. And Mayor, I can certainly say that it's good to be back here at the uh, Mayor's press conference talking about community and neighborhood development because um, we've been here before talking about different housing communities that we've opened recently and with the city's support. Um, the $3 million in um, the local uh, housing revolving loan fund as well as the home money, uh, federal money that has been dedicated toward Hammer Mill Village um, can really be summed up in one word, and that's an important word in the world of f housing financing as well as any financing, and that's leverage, um, signifying local buy-in uh, for projects when we go out to uh, apply for and request state and federal dollars at different uh, levels. And so having that uh, money, uh, having the dollar amount to go toward the capital improvements or capital uh, construction is, is significant, but what it symbolizes uh, to me is even, even more important. Um, just a couple words about uh, the, what we're proposing. Um, we are uh, talking about a site uh, located at 1318 East Lake Road. Uh, locally, people might be a little more familiar with this as the former Hammer Mill um, 
paper mill, international paper site. Uh, there's roughly a 14-acre developable site that has been on the market um, and undeveloped, and so we're proposing uh, redevelopment of that uh, brownfield site into uh, an affordable housing community by the name of Hammer Mill Village. Uh, this fits nicely with um, a lot of the work that's going on in that neighborhood that is not related to housing necessarily, but the Erie Center for Arts and Technology is nearby. Uh, Hammett Health Foundation has their nursing program located in, um, in that facility. Uh, there's a health facility uh, intended for the community for uh, better access of health care in low-income and moderate-income neighborhoods. And so it's exciting to talk about all of those supportive services and efforts that are going into community revitalization in that neighborhood and complementing those, uh, those efforts. I also wanted to mention all of the work that Erie Management Group is doing to provide job opportunities in that particular local area. And so between job training and workforce development components, healthcare and job opportunities, uh, we feel that this site uh, touches upon not only brownfield redevelopment to get that site back into adding to the tax base, but providing uh, excellent opportunities for residents and businesses in that area as well. Uh, this development uh, and this commitment of 3.3 million will help leverage an additional 18 or 19 million dollars in other resources from uh, state and federal, federal sources to come into our community to help enhance our housing for uh, low and moderate income residents. Um, the energy efficiency standards uh, that we build to, um, we achieve what is called uh, the Enterprise Foundation um, standard for housing development. It's called Enterprise Green, and we go through a number of tests uh, to, to meet those standards to not only have energy efficiency, but quality of life for residents. And so this is quality, uh, affordable housing that's being proposed, and um, we think that it touches off a, a number of uh, key community priorities to get that site back and active and uh, provide this housing opportunity. So thank you very much again for the opportunity, and uh, we look forward to our continued partnership. Thank you. Also, thank you and congratulations to, to all three of you, uh, Chris, Seth, and Matthew. Appreciate all that you're doing. It's very, very, very exciting. I also want to send a thank you to Roger Brandt. Roger was originally going to be part of this. Uh, he's president of Rochester's caucus. Uh, he was unable to be here because I believe his first grandson is being born this morning. So uh, we wish him well on that as well. The city is excited to partner with all of you on these projects, which will improve the quality of life for our residents and help us achieve our vision for Erie that we are a community that celebrates welcoming and vibrant neighborhoods and our world-class downtown and bayfront. Chris, again, thanks for all the work that you're leading to in these projects. I really, really appreciate it. In the coming weeks, Chris and our solicitor's office will be working on preparing and signing loan agreements so these projects are able to move forward. We thank the project review team for their hard work and we believe that these projects will be transformational in nature. Next, we are very excited to announce the second batch of recipients for the city's flagship ARP and restaurant entertainment venue grants. Jennifer Hoffman, the city's business development officer, will now share this exciting information with you. Jen, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning, everyone. When we reopened the flagship ARP and restaurant entertainment industry relief ap grant applications for a submission on April 1st, we had already reviewed more than 70 applications combined and awarded 28 flagship ARP grants and 22 restaurant entertainment industry relief grants. Before the de final deadline of April 28th, we received and reviewed 125 flagship ARP applications and 59 restaurant entertainment relief applications in total. In order to give each application the attention it deserved, we took the last two months to sort, review, and discuss the second batch of completed applications with the nine-member project review team. The third batch of flagship ARP applications, those received during the month of April, are currently under review and will be announced in the coming weeks. 
I'm happy to say that today we will award 21 flagship ARP grants and 15 restaurant entertainment industry relief grants. The flagship ARP is a $2,500 grant awarded to the City of Erie small businesses and those city entrepreneurs that braved a startup during the pandemic. Recipients were reviewed and recommended by the project review team based upon eligible plans for funding and proof of revenue decline or increased costs, as well as qualified census tract location. The 21 recipients of the second batch of flagship ARP funding are Andrea's Kitchens Plus, owner Andrea Lebowski. This award will assist her with parking lot improvements and new interior displays. Clutter Busters Cleaning, LLC, owner Rachel Moore. These funds will be used to purchase uniform and to, uniforms and to upgrade equipment. Culture Square, LLC, owners Brian and Cynthia Dunn. These funds will be used to purchase video production equipment for this global learning and marketplace. Compassionate Heart Massage Therapy, owner Heather Hart. Funds will be used to purchase additional equipment to facilitate her expansion. Didi's Notary, owner Dana Boos. This award will assist with startup equipment and costs for this mobile notary service. Dina's Dominican Restaurant, owners Dina and John Sear. Funding will assist with new kitchen equipment and marketing costs. EJH Entertainment, better known as Jekyll and Hyde, uh, owner Jason Fultz. These funds will assist with vendor and utility bills associated with the shutdown. Gazala Construction, owner Hussein Gazala. Funding will assist this startup with supplies and tools. Glass Growers Gallery, owner Emily Eames. Funding will assist with revenue decline and associated rent costs, as well as diminished foot traffic due to ongoing construction around her building. Gold Crown Billiards, owner Paul, owners Paul and Patricia Schofield. Funding to assist with deferred maintenance due to shutdowns. Gone Local, owner Kristen Santiago. This funding will assist with hiring part-time staff and some packaging upgrades. Handled with care, child care, owner Nadine Leach. This funding will assist Nadine with website upgrades and some roof repairs. Health Source Chiropractor, owner Dr. Ander, Amber Cridler, excuse me. Funding to assist with marketing and business expenses. Uh, Helping Hands Home Health Care, owner Mary Ewell. This will assist with a laptop, QuickBooks, and other startup needs for this health care agency. Lake Erie Woodworks, owner Armando Reyes. This will assist Armando with expansion of his classes and the creation of an online boutique for his, uh, for his woodworking crafts. Master Barbers, owners Donald Wood and Christopher Ingram. This will assist with working capital for shop equipment and sanitization. Monticello Massage and Kinesiology, owner Missy Hitz. This will assist Missy with the purchase of new equipment to cover increased janitorial fees and PPE. PPE for her staff. Provider Resources, Inc., owner, Sean Key Hearts. Funding will assist with working capital for day-to-day -day employee expenses. RP Electric Service Masters, owner, Rasheen Pugh. This will assist Rasheen with purchasing billing, estimating, and bookkeeping software. Supreme Legend Endeavors, owner, Alicia Pancoast. This will assist Alicia with opening a brick and mortar shop for her all natural, organic, and affordable nutritional su supplements. Your Sailing Adventure, owner Scott Hitz. Funding uh, will assist Scott with regional advertising and signage for this day sale startup. Uh, congratulations to all of you. Uh, next, the Restaurant and Entertainment Industry Relief Grant was created to assist one of the hardest hit industries during the pandemic with a grant of $5,000. All recipients have proven severe revenue decline, increased costs, and have br or have bravely opened during the pandemic. Specific NAICS codes are required for eligibility in this category of funding. Uh, they were listed, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, in the guidelines of the application. Based upon the number of eligible applicants at the deadline, this will be the final batch of restaurant entertainment industry relief grants. The 15 recipients of the final batch are 3B Saloon, Owner, J.J. Brown. Casablanca Grill. Owner, Mohamed Masri. Dinner is served. Owner, Chef Lisa Heidelberg. Erie Ale Works. Owners, Jeff McCullough and Steve Anthony. Erie Shish Kebab. Owner, Sahib Kareem. Habibi Restaurant. Owners, Samir and Carrie Musafa. 
How Nice LLC, otherwise known as Local Eaton Poor, owners James and Ellen Innes. Lavery Brewing Company, owner Jason Lavery. Murray Inc., otherwise known as Gatherings, owner Shannon LaSalle. PACA, Executive Director Mark Tannenbaum. Panos Restaurant, owner Pierre Lagasse. Parisa Cat Cafe, owner Dina Rupp. Spencer House Bed and Breakfast, uh, owners Stephen and Lisa Fries. Triple D's Tasty Grill, owner Daryl Roberts. And finally, Ye Old Sweet Shop, owner Kelly Graham. Congratulations to each of the flagship ARP and Restaurant Entertainment Industry Grant recipients. The Department of Economic and Community Development is happy to offer support as you navigate this unprecedented time. We hope that even this small fraction of relief can help you on your journey. We are currently working with the third and final batch of flagship ARP grants. If you have applied for the Small Business and Diversity Loan Program and have submitted both an application fee and supporting documentation, know that the review of your request is currently underway. If you have yet to submit an application for the Diversity Loan Program, please do so now so that we can get you a checklist of all documents for consideration. Diversity Loan applications will be reviewed in batches as processing fees and sub are submitted and checklists are completed. Please do not hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions about this process. Again, I wish to expend, extend a heartfelt thank you to our nine-member project review team. They spent hours of their own time reading and evaluating the completed and eligible applications. It's never an easy task to sort through all the deserving and original projects that we see. We couldn't do all of this without you, and I appreciate you more than you know. Finally, I'm excited to remind everyone that we have a Kiva borrower that is currently in, public, in the public phase of their loan funding. Uh, Kevin McLaurin is the owner of the food trailer Trap Shack, and he's raising capital to purchase a truck to become truly mobile and to bring tra Trap Shack cuis cuisine to um, other neighborhoods. Kevin's looking to expand his business, uh, with, uh, and with this expansion, we'll be able to offer jobs to youth in his neighborhood. Kiva is a zero interest, zero fees loan facilitated by PayPal. You can make a t loan with as little as $25. Uh, and as Kevin makes his payments, you will be repaid. Through the Erie City Match Program, funded by PNC, Northwest Bank, and the City ARP funding, every dollar that Kevin raises with Kiva will be doubled until he reaches his goal of $7,500. He's more than halfway there, and he's still on the move. With a loan to Kevin, you can feel good about knowing that you've supported a local entrepreneur to further their dreams. To find Kevin's loan, please visit kivaushub.org and click the button at the top right corner, Find a U.S. Loan, or you can visit the, city's, the City of Erie's Facebook page for a direct link. Thank you. Now I'll turn it back to you, Mayor. Thank you very much, Jennifer and Chris Groner, for overseeing the distribution of this portion of the ARP funds. And a spe special thank you right now to Renee Lamus for her untiring work, her coordination, and her support of this project. Thanks to our project review team also for countless volunteer hours that they have spent reviewing and scoring proposals. Renee, Jen, Chris, and the team have been inundated with proposals, but they are committed to getting the funding out as quickly as possible, and they're doing a great job of it. Because of everyone's hard work today, we are delighted to announce the $3.45 million in low interest loans and the $127,500 in grants to local businesses and entrepreneurs. Thanks again to the incredible volunteers and the entire project review team. We appreciate you and the time that you have invested in ensuring that this funding is getting into the hands of those who need it the most for eligible projects and initiatives. Your decisions will have a huge positive impact on the future of Erie. Thank you. As Jen mentioned, she is compiling the third batch of flagship ARP f grants for review. The project review team is also in the process of reviewing applications and recommending proposals for, sm for the Small Business Diversity Loan Program. So if you start in an application, be sure to complete it as soon as you can. You can also access additional information and the application at cityof .erie .pa .us ARP. 
please reach out to Jen Hoffman, as she said, with any questions. Her email is jhoffman at erie.pa.us. Excuse me a second, I've got to grab something. This brings us today to proclaim June as Immigrant, Immigrant Heritage Month and World Refugee Day here in the city of Erie. This month and every month when we swear in new American citizens at the federal courthouse, I think about my grandparents. My, some of them came, two of them came here from Sicily, that's on my dad's side, and two from Ireland on my mom's side. They made a new life here in Erie. If it hadn't been for them, I wouldn't exist and be able to be here today. Immigrants and refugees make Erie what it is. They have created our rich cultural diversity. So today, I want to present a special proclamation. I'm going to ask uh, you, you guys to come up and be on each side of me as I read this. And then they'll be speaking also when, when we're done here. But. So this is called Celebrating Imitage, Im Immigrant Heritage Month and World Refugee, Re Refugee Day. Whereas the history of Erie is closely tied to the learning and the new life that results from arrival of immigrants and refugees that make Erie a much more vibrant community. Whereas each generation of immigrants and refugees has connected Erie to the fabric of freedom which is long sought by many immigrants and refugees after escaping things like persecution and dangerous circumstances. Whereas immigrants and refugees are vital, a vital part of Erie. They contribute to our cities culturally, spiritually, professionally, economically, and politically. Whereas all immigrants and refugees improve Erie's boundless cultural diversity, which is essential to Erie's future as a world-class city. Whereas, as a city of diverse cultures, we seek to grow strong by building strong ties with our immigrant communities. As we foster better relationships from people to people, culture to culture, and country to country. Now therefore I, Joseph E. Schember, Mayor of the City of Erie, do hereby proclaim June 2022 as Immigrant Heritage Month and recognize June 20 as World Refugee Day in the city of Erie. I encourage every Erie resident to celebrate our immigrant heritage and their contributions to our city. It is our diversity that makes us stronger. So I will now present these to Hamid. And uh, Hamid, by the way, is the inclusive case manager for U.S. Committee for Refugees and Immigrants. And Nandu is up here as well. He's the Director of Refugee Resettlement at Catholic Charities Counseling and Adoption Services. So I, I'm happy to have them here. And Hamid, I believe you're speaking first. Thank you. Hi, everyone. And thank you, Mayor. Um, special thanks for Mr. Mayor and for having me and inviting us to participate in today's pro uh, proclamation for World Refugee Day. The Erie Field Office of the United States Committee for Refugees and Immigrants was founded over a century ago and as the International Institute of Erie. And our work is needed now more than ever. We have been an integral part of community, and thank you again for inviting us today. The United, the United Nation High Commissioner for Refugees recently acknowledged the agnostic number of there are now 100 million people who are in, on the move as a refugee, the highest number in recorded history. The news reports from the war in Ukraine have recently put the spotlight on what it means to be a refugee, to be uprooted from home with the need to flee from the danger. But there are similar heartbreaking humanitarian crises 
happening in many more places around the world. Our agency is still resettling people from Afghanistan and the tragic civil and the tragic civil wars in Democratic Republic of the Congo and Syria. Just the same as we did with the aftermath of war that breaks across the Europe, South Asia, and Africa. On this day, it's good to proclaim, proclaim Erie's status as a welcoming city to recognize of Erie community who have opened their heart to the new neighbors around the world. We know that Erie is stronger for immigrants' heritage, stronger with more workers for the growing economy, and stronger with the new generation that aims the America's dream right on the shores of Lake Erie. Thank you for making today's proclamation and for recognizing the importance of refugees in Erie's past, present, and future. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, for the proclamation. Um, we really appreciate the effort of the city of Erie um, to the immigrant communities here locally. Um, my name is Nandu. I'm a resettlement director from Catholic Church Counseling and Adoption Services. June is the Refugee and Immigrant Heritage Month. This is the time to honor the contributions that my fellow refugees and immigrants have made to our Erie community. For every refugee and immigrant who have made Erie for their home, their story started in a different corner of this world, but has brought into a unique culture and diversity into our community. CCCAS, which is Catholic Service Counseling and Adoption Services, a local voluntary agency for USCCB, which is United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, resumed resettlement program after temporary shutdown in June of 2021 and participated in resettling the first phase of Afghan arrivals and resettled 163 individuals by January 17, 2022. Catholic Charity also has resettled 28 traditional refugees so far for this calendar year. Catholic Charity's Counseling and Adoption Services is preparing to assist refugees from Ukraine. Even though Ukrainians are not coming through U.S. resettlement and only through uniting for Ukraine process, CCCAS is planning to assist those individuals and entities who have applied in DHS to sponsor Ukrainian citizens. CCCAS will help all Ukrainians who arrived in town to get connected with ORR program. In the last 10 years, Catholic Church Counseling and Adoption Services resettled 1,815 total individuals in the city of Erie from 16 different countries. They represent a wide range of ethnicities, cultures, and life stories. But the one thing they all hold in common is their unimaginable generosity and kindness, despite all that's been taken away from them. Thank you, and thank you. Thank you, Hamad and Nandu. I really, really appreciate it. We appreciate everything you do to to help arriving immigrants and refugees really make Erie their new home. Now, before I close, I want to let you know that we have now have two new American interns working with Nick and Astari Carpenter to help immigrants, refugees, and new Americans make Erie a great home for themselves. We welcome Gabby Reyes and Zareen Khan, who will be working with Nikan for the next 12 weeks to make Erie the most welcoming city in America. That concludes this week's press conference. Everyone who spoke is now available for interviews. Please follow us on social media for the very latest updates on everything that is happening in the city of Erie by searching City of Erie PA on all the major platforms. Thanks for being here and thank you for watching.